Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video we're discussing The Trap, written by Melanie Raab. This is a psychological thriller and it's pretty amazing. I could have done without sections in the book where we see the author's new book. So the main character in this book is an author and we have sections throughout the book that are based on the book that the author's just written. Not distracted from the main plot, but the main plot is pretty amazing and it's just so tense and so suspenseful and keeps you guessing as well in this book. I found it a really good book. Our main character, Linda Conrad, is a writer. So that's where we get in this book sections of the book that she's just written. So she's also housebound. The reason she's housebound, and it's been for about 11 years or 12 years in the book, is because her sister was murdered and she walked in just after the fact. So I think her sister was still alive dying at the time and she caught a glimpse of the killer and she saw the killer's face, but the killer ran away. But she couldn't pinpoint who the killer was and they didn't catch the killer. So since that event, she's been housebound and... She's just been writing at home, living at home, and she's lucky enough that she's successful and she can exist at home and just write for a living. She's at a stage where she's just thinking about a new book to write. And she's watching TV and there's an interview from somebody in politics or something on TV. And she catches the face of somebody on the screen. There's a guy standing there and she's shocked. She's sure that this face is the killer of her sister all those years ago. She finds out the guy's name and the guy's a journalist, a very well-known journalist. And she's wondering how she can bring this guy to justice, what she can do. Then it hits her. She's going to write a book that's based on the murder of her sister. She'll write it. She'll get it published. And then she'll invite this guy to do an interview with her. And the reason why it's so it's such a good plan is she doesn't give many interviews, not many at all. So that's probably the first interview she's going to give in a number of years. So she knows that this journalist can't say no. But will this plan work? Will the journalist know who she is? What is she going to do when he gets there? How is she going to trick him into confessing? What's she going to do if he keeps denying it? All these things play out in the book. And that's where all the tension comes from and all the suspense. And it's just written so well. And you feel that in the book so much. And I just wish that there's other sections were in the book that distract from this. Because you do lose that sense of tension and suspense when that happens. But those scenes with Linda and this journalist are just really amazing scenes. Both really well written characters and are just kind of reeks of suspense and tension in this book. It drips from the pages and it dragged me into this story almost immediately in this book and it kept me going and I just wanted to get through this book so quickly because I wanted to know what happened at the end. I wanted to know if this journalist was the killer because in certain parts of the book we're not sure because we don't know if Linda Conrad is reliable. Is her memory reliable? Is she making certain things up in her memory? Is she herself trustworthy? So a great psychological book a novel that I think you should read. This author, I think, is a great writer. I really felt like this book was almost like a Hitchcock movie. It had that vibe, and I think this book would make a great movie. The characters are so well developed. The whole concept, the whole plot is so interesting, so engaging. If it didn't have those little moments where I was distracted by sections of that other story, this would have been a perfect book. But it did distract me. It did take away little bits of the tension to spend so I had to build up again. And I found that very disappointing. And if I read this again, and you know, who knows, I might read this again, I'll try to ignore those sections and just keep reading the main plot. And maybe it will be a perfect book then. Linda, our main character, a great character. So believable. Her actions, her motives, they're true to the story and true to who the character is. I also like the fact that she is not always reliable. We can't always trust her memories. We can't even trust her feelings all the time. And I like the fact that her being housebound 
plays into some of her emotions and her motives as well. And as the story develops, we get to learn more about her in the past as well with her relationship with her sister. And we get to see that she remembers things at the start as being all rosy and golden, but is that the truth? Because we learn different things as the story goes on. And that's just more character development and more bringing the character to life. Because you see bits of the character may be in shadow. And I love that in some books, how we have this character who's in front of us, but parts are in shadow, you know, like parts of a map that we haven't seen yet. And as they're explored, all those parts come to light and we end up with a perfectly rounded character. And it happened in this book. Victor Lenzen is the journalist that Linda suspects is the killer. But is he a killer? When we first meet him, we're not sure because he does seem so innocent. And I was always guessing in this book, is he the killer or not? And you don't find out until the very last chapter. This book is so well developed and this character is so well developed because it doesn't give anything away. So the author was able to construct this character and just give us layer by layer, not the whole character at once. And I found that so fascinating. It's just a sign of a great author. Anna, Linda's dead sister. It's interesting to have her as such a prominent character. And the plot does focus around her. I mean, it's all about her death many years ago and Linda coping with that and trying to bring about justice. But the character Anna, she's discussed or explored through this novel bit by bit as we go on and we see different parts of her. So at the start, we see a character that we think of as being perfect. As we go on, we just see more memories come to light and they're given to us. And we see that Anna wasn't perfect after all. She was quite nasty, quite cruel, very selfish, also very vindictive. So that gives us the impression of a quite an awful person, really, and gives us more motives for other people who could be the killer, including the main character. So it's interesting how the author gave us this character in that way. And as the story progressed, it just opens up one or two more suspects who could have killed Anna, and I just found that very fascinating and very well done. This is the first book from the author that I've read, but I thought it was amazing. And I just want to go and try to find more books from the same author and read them all. This is such a good psychological thriller. The characters are great. The scenes are great. The tension between the characters in certain scenes is just wonderful. This book would make a great movie, in my opinion. And I just hope one day it's made into a movie. So I think the characters are so well developed and described in this story and they're given such life in this story, you can't help picture them in your mind when you're reading it. A great book, a great thriller, and I really do think you should read it. I rate it a 4 out of 5. I rate it a 4 because of those sections that distract from the main plot. If they weren't there, I'm sure this book would be a 5 out of 5. On my channel, I review many thrillers. If you don't want to miss out on those videos, check out my channel and subscribe. There's also a thriller playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.